So these um, sculpture projects uh, for Art Survey aren't due until after Thanksgiving. But what is due before Thanksgiving is you need to hollow out the back of your sculpture. So this sculpture is like a solid block, like a really thick block of clay. All right. So if I were to let this dry out and put it in the kiln, I would think it's dry from the looks and the feel of the outside, but the inside there would still be moisture. So what would happen is I'd put it in the kiln and it would, it would like a bomb. It would explode like a bomb. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah. So <coughs> in I thought it was, uh, I thought maybe I'd throw it, show it in here, but I don't think we actually have time. But in 3D class, um, when we do clay sculpture, um, I show a video of a, um, a woman who makes like six foot or taller rabbits out of clay. And she makes them, she actually like forms these rabbits using a two by four and like slamming huge blocks of clay with this two by four to get this huge sculpture. And then she, carves out like each toe of the rabbit and hollows it down to this thickness. The rule that I've kind of made to this thickness, the rule I've kind of made because people tend to remember is the rule of thumb, hollow out your sculpture to the thickness of your thumb or the width of your thumb. The rule of thumb is make it the width of your thumb. Not the length of your thumb, too thick. but this way. The argument is, well, everybody has different size hands. It's generally speaking. I've, I haven't had a student um, hollow out their sculpture correctly um, anywhere from this width, I would say maybe an inch and an eighth, to um, and smaller and have their sculpture explode. I haven't had that happen. Um, usually we lose one out of a hundred. We do, we do. So. Um, but it's not going to be you. It's not going to be anyone in this class. Um, so I'm going to show you how to hollow out. We have to do this before Thanksgiving because after we hollow it out, we are going to create a textured slab for the background and attach it to it and then create a hole so the air can escape from this like encapsulated little thing that we make. Okay. So I'm going to start. Um, first step is you have to decide what size loop tool to use to carve out the clay from the back of the sculpture. Um, in some cases, you might use all, like, just a variety of sizes. Um, but in this case, <coughs> like, if I had to hollow out a long, thin nose or something, maybe I would use this, which is called a ribbon tool. Um, but in this case, I'm just starting, so I'm going to carve out the back of this tile. I don't want to carve this edge too thin, this edge too thin, because what's going to happen is if I carve it too thin, that I won't have a surface to attach to my slab background. Does that make sense? I need a nice, strong attachment there. So here I go. So first step is I take any drawing tool and I'm just, or any tool that'll make a mark and just make this kind of outline. See that already? Like make an outline. Okay. Then I'm just going to start digging. Like digging out. This, I actually really enjoy this part because it's really like satisfying, like taking huge chunks out. The craftsmanship in the back of your tile is not assessed. For instance, it doesn't matter if the inside hollowed out section of your tile looks neat. Doesn't matter. So you can just kind of like hack away at it. And I have some students that neatness is important to you. And if that's you and you want to, when you're done hollowing, smooth the inside and make it all, you know, pretty on the inside, <coughs> you can do that, you know. There are some ceramic artists that actually um, decorate the bottoms of their pottery or like the insides of things, like things that you wouldn't normally see as like a happy, like a surprise, like, oh my God, look at this. The inside is even decorated. 
it's like a, the surprise part, but yep, no need. You can just hack away. Now, how do I know that I'm not carving through? The reason I want you to do this before Thanksgiving is because our clay is really nice and wet right now. Um, if we carve all the way through and make a hole, we can patch it. Yes? What are you going to do about the ears? Okay, the question is, what do you do about the ears? That's a perfect opportunity to use a small ribbon, ribbon tool. And the person who this sculpture belongs to um, might not be done with recreating the planes of the face. And remember, that's something that's <coughs> assessed. Um, the people that are doing elephants may not have done the ears but the ears aren't going to be hollowed out. So this is an earless elephant is a perfect time to do this because what's going to happen when you're manhandling your sculpture? Yeah, I mess up the details. Yeah, you're going to mess up the details. So this is a good time when you have the planes in the face complete. Now, the person whose sculpture this is, he might feel like he wants to keep working on the planes. That's fine. He can still do that. He can still carve in. He can still add some clay. I mean, he's not going to like really press hard on it because obviously there's no support. If you are in that situation where you want extra support, bald up newspaper in there and that's fine. Okay. Um, all right. Say the period's over and you don't have any more time. Wrap it in damp paper towel, not dripping, and now it should fit in a Ziploc bag. No board. Say it's Thanksgiving weekend. Hopefully there'll be a background on here. On here, I bet you one out of all of my art survey classes, one person will not. It will probably still, if it's in a Ziploc bag, with a damp paper towel underneath and on top, just like this, it will probably last, be fine for Thanksgiving weekend and you could do a textured slab in the background after that. But you'd just be a little bit behind. Ideally, we do, you know, texture, um, including eyes, you could do eyes after Thanksgiving when you come back. Um, but ideally, you would have your structure part complete, and all you really have to worry about is um, texture on the animal, maybe like fur, um, eyes, things like that. So I'm going to show you how to um, how to do the slab background. What you'll need, and I'll point this out later. It's in the back of the room. Is you'll need a dowel or a rolling pin, and a piece of clay. And you want to make sure the clay is homogenous. If it's a bunch of, bunch of old clay just shoved together, it can get cracky. Have you ever experienced that? Like when you're trying to like work with clay and it's like, it's like all kind of like this and you're, you've got to like smear the parts together. Um, just make sure it is all smeared together. Or you slam it on the table a couple of times, make, it, make sure it's like homogenous, okay? And then you're going to roll out and then we're going to texture the backgrounds of these. So it's important to make your slab, and do this on newspaper, please. Make your slab bigger than your animal. But you can do it in any shape you want. And it can be hand carved, but we have texture tools. Um, in the middle of the room, you'll see some boxes that weren't out yesterday there's like a basket there and there's um, a couple bins with stamps that students have made. <coughs> um, I also have like some fake plants. Okay. Um, what you want to do is like just look through all that stuff and find things that you like and you can roll on your slab and you get like a really nice texture on the background. Um, with the lights up, I don't know how well it shows, so I'm just going to show the people that are here. See? Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so I'm just going to like do a few. This also holds the glaze really nicely. There's also, um, if you wanted to put like a frame do this and then you're going to press it in really good. Okay. 
um, so you could put a frame around and then you're going to decide you're not going to leave the edge like this you're going to decide what shape you want and then you're going to cut it with a fettling knife do you have a fettling knife? Oh, to the rescue alright so you're going to decide like what shape you know what shape you want it um, I'm going to put a couple more of these in And there's like a lace pattern. Um, I might even say that, I don't know, I'm just going to do something. But there's a lot of possibilities. And then any sharp edges kind of clean up. And then at this point you have like, say I went like all the way around and I had these like, you know, smoothed edges here. Um, or if, say I chose this, then I would want to, I'd want to do something on the edge, right? So. You don't want to leave the edge just plain. You want to like either like smooth, like round it and like put a texture on there or it just makes a big difference. So whatever you choose to put on, the edge is all going to be cleaned up. So that's important. And smooth out. At this point, I'm just grabbing like random things. Okay, say this is what say this is what I wanted to do. Okay, and say I gotta make this in the screen. There we go. All right. Now you're ready to scratch and attach. Okay. So what I would do is outline my sculpture, outline the whole thing, and then, and then I'm going to scratch the inside of this. And this is a pretty big piece. The ear, this ear kind of goes off, so that's fine. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Take my toothbrush with a slip, put it on this side, scratch this whole edge. And he's going to like just, you know, clean this up a little bit before he attaches this, but not the inside, but like the outside. Okay, scratch, 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 keep scratching, flip, flip with the um, toothbrush in the, um, and the flip out of the big orange bucket, and then, on the vertical part of the sculpture, you're going to press with your finger a snake of clay. So see how I did that? So I'm not like, oops, I didn't use slip. That's what happens. I'm trying to be fast. But, <laughs> no, you don't want to put water. Tom, can you grab me a piece, uh, like a paper towel and um, some slip, some slip from the slip bucket, which is underneath the counter real quick. I got to do this right. Underneath the counter, there's slip in a bucket. And like grab a toothbrush and take this toothbrush is on top. <coughs> yeah, and like scoop it up with a toothbrush. Like get like a pile of it and bring it over real quick. <laughs> Put it on the paper towel. Is that a lot? 
Get more. Okay. All right, bring it over. Quick, quick. <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. So, whoever taught you to um to add water to attach p two pieces of clay, um, I hate to I hate to be like this, but they're wrong. They're not right. They're, that's incorrect. It's because what will happen if you just add water and then put another piece of clay on there, you'll you'll probably get a crack. Um, because what happens to water? when it evaporates. It just goes away, right? It goes into the air and it's away from your pot. So it was filling space like on your pieces of clay and now it's evaporated. So it's gone. So there's going to be a crack. Um, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, there's going to be a crack. So, um, yeah. So this is um, so I'm just adding some, because when you're adding just water, now, there's obviously water in this clay, but it's homogenous. Does that make sense? So if I was to take a container of water and add straight clean water, that wouldn't work. If I was going to add water to my clay, my dry clay to break it down and then add that clay, that, that is going to work better. Um, I hate to use this word because it freaks people out, but it's because um, there's like there's like a bacteria in this clay now. So that's what breaks down the two parts, right? So um, you're like, oh, there's bacteria in my clay, gross. So I scratched this, but it's not like a bacteria that's going to hurt you. It's like swamp mud bacteria. <laughs> What else can I say, right? All right. So this is like all broken down and scratched. Okay. And now I'm going to line this up, stick it on there, grab my coil. I should have never tried to rush for demonstration purposes in the first place, but no. What you want to do is hollow it out before Thanksgiving. Best scenario, but if you wrap it correctly, it'll be fine, is that you do like the background. But you probably, if you don't get to the background, it's okay. If it's not hollowed out, um, a concern is that you'll come back and it'll be too dry. Most importantly, you hollow out before you add texture. Because what's going to happen if you are manhandling your sculpture after you add all this texture to it? It's going to like squish it, right? It's going to mess it up. And so I'm um, shoving that clay, disrupting the background as little as possible. And Notice when, see, look at that, right? Now it's fine. Um, I'd want to clean up this, this edge. So I'd want to clean this up. And maybe I would add texture on it. Um, and some of you are probably thinking, well, Miss West just created a bomb with this tile. It's because See how I'm like now I'm texturing the edge. It's gonna look awesome. It's gonna expand with the heat and explode like a bomb. So I'll show you what to do. Yeah, yeah it'll totally explode. So I'm gonna show you what to do. So you know, make it so these are gonna hang on the wall. So now, see how I've like wrapped the leaf around? Um, so make it so that the sides of the tile are nice to look at. Because when this hangs up on a wall, you're going to see that edge, right? So that edge, that's um, a transition from front to side. So it says on your rubric, it'll say, are your transitions neat and clean? Meaning, are they neat? Like, 
Is it all like lumpy? Can I still see the snake of clay that you didn't smear into your sculpture around the edge? That's a transition from the wall to the side of your tile, from the side of your tile to the front of your tile, from the front of your tile to the side of your sculpture. You want those transitions to be as neat as possible. Here I did it by smearing the coil into the fox. Now, it's, it's this, is it a fox? Wolf, okay. So if this wolf was all textured, then it, I would be just like wrecking all of his texture that he spent all this time to do. So you're not going to learn about texture until after Thanksgiving. Now, how are we going to avoid the situation where we've basically created a bomb, right? Um, <coughs> we're going to make a hole in the back, but we're going to make it serve a dual purpose. So, this is going to be a hole that also serves for hanging. So, you can watch the board for this. I'm going to um, look at the center of the wolf, which is right about here, and the, where the line of symmetry is, and then um, not too close to this um, V that I've carved here, but a little bit further down, but not halfway down. I'm going to create a hole for a nail. I don't want to just put a hole straight through that would be parallel with the floor because what's going to happen when I have this hanging on the wall and the door slams? It's going to fall. Yeah, it'll fall. So I'm going to cut it at an angle, okay? So the top of this hole is going to be at an angle like like this and I can do this just see how I'm holding my knife this way and I can clean up the top of it like this and then just go like this and then the bottom loops around and I just make sure that it's through to the hollow part of my tile and I'm good and then I gotta just kinda dig it out and then I'm just gonna recheck if there's any loose pieces of clay in your sculpture, not the end of the world. And then you're just going to make sure that there's an edge there. And the backs, that's where your name's going to go eventually when you're all done with these. But for now, like as long as it's in a bag, you don't need to put your name on the back of the tile. We'll be doing that after Thanksgiving. Okay? And perfect. It could hang just like this and at this point now I can really I can put my elephant ears on I can put like texture I can put eyes on um, I can do all of that stuff and I don't have to worry about um, you know the structure it's going to be beautiful when I come back from Thanksgiving real quick when we um, wrap these though um, you're going to try your goal if this is what you're able to complete your goal would be to wrap in damp paper towels, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then put it on top of your board so you can walk around with it, but your board wouldn't be in your plastic bag because that absorbs wood and it would probably create mold after four, four or five days. Right? Ugh. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. So, Elias.